Welcome to the Maxwell Executive Leadership Podcast, where our goal is to help you increase your reputation as a leader, increase your ability to influence others, and increase your ability to fully engage your team for remarkable results. I am Perry Holly, a Maxwell Leadership Facilitator and Coach. And I'm Chris Cody, Executive Vice President of Maxwell Leadership. Thank you for joining us. Perry and I uh, want to just say thank you, not only for joining us today, but just just being an avid listener very and yeah. very so grateful. Uh, crossed over 200 ep- uh, episodes, which yeah. you probably have just listened to, and over 4 million downloads. So thank you, and just continue to share this, right, with yeah. your team. We talk about this where you're coaching and our team, they're coaching leaders to where they're sharing this with their team and then mm-hmm. spending 5, 10 minutes at the beginning of a meeting kind of unpacking it. So and sending us comments and questions. Yeah. I think, I think uh, the next few weeks uh, we're just answering questions that we've gotten from folks and I'm looking forward to, I always appreciate people helping me with content. I, I, do, I mean, yeah. uh, sending in their valuable questions. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So thank you. We wanted to say that as we started um, our session today, just a reminder again, if you want to, to leave a question or a comment or something for us to talk about, mm-hmm. and you just want to say, man, I'm struggling with this leadership topic. I need your help. I'd love for you guys to unpack that a little bit. Don't hesitate to go to maxwellleadership.com slash podcast. There's a form there. You can leave that. That'll get to us and or our team, and we'll make sure that we address address that for you. Well, today's topic is should leaders critique in public? And you guys have probably heard this before. I know I've heard it where that, that age old quote or theme is, man, you want to praise in public mm-hmm. and critique in public private. You don't, you don't want to do that. And so, um, what we, what, th- this is, this comes in from one of our listeners yes. and I love it because it's so real that Perry and I were just having a conversation this morning about this as a leader. And so Scott, as a loyal <laughs> podcast listener, thank you for asking this question. You're not the only one that's struggling with it. <laughs> Perry and today. I, yeah, today, <laughs> no lie in our leadership. So I absolutely love that. So he asked, aren't we losing the ability for others to observe and learn from the critique of leaders or people so that they are clear on the leaders or our standards and expectations and what we will or will not tolerate in meetings and mm-hmm. sessions or whatever that might be. Yeah. So yeah. talk to us a little bit about where you're going to go with this content and this question or thought from well, Scott. I, I actually don't want it to go unmentioned that Scott also suggested that maybe Perry would have five reasons. And so <laughs> noticing everyone's a, com- yes. everyone is a comedian now. That's right. They're following uh, it. I that. love it. Thanks God. Uh, but I thought about it and actually I can come up with five things I think you should consider. So five questions I would ask about whether you want to critique someone in public uh, to make an example, to let other people learn, to let them see uh, what you tolerate and what you don't tolerate uh, is, is an interesting question. And I have always heard, you know, always praise in public public critique yes, and private. That's right. But uh, I thought we would, we would uh, go in that direction. Um, I am proud of you uh, for, <laughs> you know, the, the five things that we're going to discuss today. Yeah. You know, when we talk about this, this is really about providing feedback to your yeah. team. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, consistent communication and feedback with them, both from a constructive, uh, but, but then also on the other side of this, this is something where it's positive and your team does need <clears> to hear a, both of them and in the right way. And so let's talk a little bit about, cause this word critique can come across as, you know, finger pointing, you know, you think about back yeah, in the day, crit- criticism, criticism, yeah. right. And so as we talk about this, let's unpack a little bit about constructive feedback. Well, I, I definitely think, you know, glass half empty critique or criticism glass half full, like you said, it, it is productive, um, uh, feedback that we want, we want to help people. So, but part of the question, let me me get started with the questions and, and get your feedback on that. So uh, the first question is what outcome is it that you're really looking for? Mm. Um, We've talked here about, I know I introduced the E plus R equal O where events happen. So people do stuff. um, uh, And and how do you, how do you respond to that? But what's your view on, and maybe do you even remember E plus R equal O? I do. I do, and I'm a big fan of it. Yeah. And um, I know Brian Kite talks about that a lot. There's a lot of great resources out yep. there, and I think this is a a topic that, again, I'm internally right now working through this, and I think it, it's so relevant. Where we talk about it, the event, right, where something happened in a meeting or a conversation or at a session, someone on your team did something that requires your direct feedback or critique in the moment. Now. Um, you can't control that, 
Can't right? control the E. Can't control the Things E, but happen. what you can control is the R, the response. which is the response yeah. to the event. Mm -hmm. And as leaders, sometimes uh, we handle that the right way. Sometimes we don't. And then based on the R, we're going to get to this kind of this E is going to then generate with the R, the O, yeah. which the is outcome. the outcome. Yeah. Now, you can create the outcome that you're looking for, but at the end of the day, you can't necessarily control what's going to happen based off of that outcome. So, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of this. It's a great little simple formula, and I think it's something you can keep in mind and work with. Well, I, exactly right. I, I think you definitely want to start every – Every opportunity you have to give this constructive feedback or critique with a, with a, just a thought, what is the outcome I'm looking for? And it could, you know, I guess there are times you want, I really want to send a message, yeah. uh, which uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but if you did that, if, if you did it with consent, what are come to the possible outcomes you get when you consider the outcome first? Yeah. Well, I think there's two, there's two ways that this could go uh, from big pictures, which is, you're going to put somebody in their place, which is not going to be uh, overall good for team right. morale, team culture. Um, or you, the other thing is you're thinking about is, okay, well, how do I want to help them grow? Or how mm -hmm. do I want to help them develop through what I observed in that particular event? Yeah, and I think, you know, which of those two do you want? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I really want to be thinking about um, when I get a chance to provide a critique, um, if I'm going to do it publicly in front of others, I'm probably, I just know that we, we've talked here a little bit about shame and about shame triggers that people have and that you just don't know yeah. how someone's going to receive that. So for me, the private critique uh, or constructive feedback is something that I'm, I'm probably going to lean toward because it just gives me the outcome that I really want, which is to let somebody know that uh, we're trying to help you grow yeah. and, and to develop. And we made a mistake, something happened, can't control that, but we can't control, control what we go from here. And this is really around the emotional intelligence of being a leader, mm -hmm. to understand that there are feelings. Yeah. Yes, I know that's a soft word uh, uh, for leaders to, to grasp and understand, but there are feelings when it comes to leading people, and you need to not only be aware and control yours, but be aware of the others in the moment. And I was just thinking, you and I were talking about this this morning too earlier, but uh, Ed Milet taught it at the uh, Live to Lead. Yeah. He, I, I really is it's really stuck with me is that you're always making people feel something. Mm, that's good. Are you intentional about what you make people feel? And I, I, uh, I don't respond. I react. I come, I come flying off the handle of someone and give a, a public critique. I'm now making them feel something. Is yeah. it, is it intentional? And, and I'm, you know, as a parent, I've done some intentional flying off the handle just to, to make somebody feel something. But it, when there's it's talking about engagement and your team and those types of things, I, I think it's worth thinking about. Yeah. That. I think, I can confess uh, as a parent and <laughs> as a leader that, uh, that that's definitely happened. Hey, podcast listeners, how would you like to be equipped with the tools to continue your personal growth and refine your strengths and weaknesses, all while being surrounded by other growth-minded leaders like yourself? You may have heard of our International Maxwell Conference, or IMC. It's our biannual event in which Maxwell Leadership Certified team members come from all around the world to grow and learn together. IMC this August is the first time we're opening the event to the public by kicking the event off with our first ever Personal Growth Day. This is a one and a half day event on August 29th through 30th in Orlando, Florida, and it's designed to dig deeper into who you are and how you tick so that you can become the best version of yourself. If you're unable to attend Personal Growth Day in person, we also offer virtual access to the event. If you'd like to participate in a one-of-a-kind experience and stand shoulder to shoulder with growing leaders who will sharpen your skills and equip you to create powerful, positive impact in your life, go to maxwellleadership.com forward slash personal growth day to learn more or get your ticket. We'll see you there. All right, so this brings us to question number two, which is, do you want to create more rowers or sinkers. And when uh, I saw this, is yeah, man, this, this, is, <laughs> this is good stuff. I still use this illustration today. But this is definitely in reference to something we've talked about previously here about uh, people being in a boat, mm -hmm. all right? So, we, you know, do we have rowers, do we have watchers, and we have sinkers? So unpack this a little bit for our audience. Yeah, so uh, rowers is what the um, uh, engagement surveys as a fully engaged person. You picture them, they're in the boat, they're rowing with you. A watcher, kind of the middle of the boat, they, they've got the oar across their lap watching the scenery go by. 
And if uh, and of that team of 10, that's usually about five that have the rowers, uh, three that are rowing, five that are watching, and then two in the back of the boat are actually trying to sink the boat. Yeah, yeah. You, hear, you, know, zzz, zzz, you hear drilling <laughs> noise. What is that? It's, it's in my boat. And so if you call out someone in public, if you uh, do this critique in public, I'm, you know, I'm guessing which of those three yeah. you think you're going to generate in your boat. Uh, yeah. Again, you're making people feel something. What, how do you think that public critique is going to affect engagement? Yeah, but best case, we're looking at a, a watcher, I think even maybe more realistic or worst case is um, sinkers. But I love what you talk about this too, where you go, hey, it's so much easier for um, a sinker to influence a watcher and bring them into the back of the sinker. So leaders, why would I can why would I add to that right. and help those sinkers be influential in bringing those watchers back? So I think best case watchers, worst case could be sinkers yep. in that boat. At least me to question number three was are you considering the three questions every follower is asking about you? Flashback again? Yes, that's right. And if you <laughs> Um, cannot right now regurgitate those three questions you have not listened to right. of, of our podcast, which those three questions are, are you trying to help me? Do you care about me? And can I trust you? Mm. And this really just speaks to the mindset of providing tough feedback or a critique of someone's performance or body language or action, whatever it might be that as a leader, you know, that it needs to be dressed, addressed. And so this goes back to another thing we've talked about, about the fine line of uh, influence and manipulation, which is your motive. Mm -hmm. And what is your motive behind and how are you going to go about doing that? Do you truly want to help them? Do you, do you truly care for them? Um, are you trying to build a relationship and a connection with a team member where they want to follow you no matter what it looks like, no matter what the challenges are, and that they can trust you? And so I think those are three great questions as you get ready to go in and have those tough conversations, or maybe even in the moment, if you can think about these questions and to zip it until yeah. you can do it in private and then think through those questions before the private situation would be a whole lot better. Uh, that's why the, the E plus R equal O, the R could also be react. When I react, it's yeah. generally not good. If I respond, it's generally more positive. But what I like about the three questions about help, care, and trust is it's really a, an influence. It's how you build influence with people. So if I'm going to give a, uh, a critique or a criticism uh, constructive feedback to someone, I really want to be thinking about if I can have that in my motive. Like you said, it's a motive thing that I'm thinking about is what I'm getting ready to do conveyed in a way that says, I'm trying to help you. I care about you. You can trust me. I can go through the most difficult critique of someone and come out positive because it's a, it's a trust issue mm. that they say, I, I believe you're trying to help me. You care about me. Yeah. I can trust you. And that yeah. it just comes out of my mouth different. It, it, it it's received uh, differently. Uh, and I think it's done better in private that way to let people know that you're you're really caring caring about them. Yeah. Uh, leads to question four was: Are you remembering the platinum oh, rule? Yes, you remember this one? Flashback again. Um, you know, everyone on your team is unique. Every person is different. Uh, how they perceive feedback, how they perceive you, uh, how they interact. There's just a lot of personality and temperament things going on there. And so we often think about the golden rule that we were taught to treat others the way we'd like to be treated, but the platinum rule says, no, how about we treat people the way they want to be treated? So I'm thinking when I'm providing critique or constructive feedback is, how would you like to be treated in this, yeah. respectfully or shaming? You mean yeah. to shame you or speak to you respectively? I'm guessing more, more respectful, but how well do you know the people? And if you're having a hard time answering that question, I'd like for you just to go back down memory lane with some maybe leaders <clears throat> Uh, that have not done this so well with you in the past and what that made you feel like in that situation. And I think that'll give you a really good lens into that question. Well, now let's go to question number five. This is my favorite one. Yeah, this is, and this is a good question. This is a good question, which is, is this a lesson worth being shared with the larger group? So back to Scott's, you know, question, and I think even bigger point here is there, are there times to critique in, pu in public so that the team can learn from it, so that everyone can learn from it. Yeah, so is there a bigger lesson? Is there a bigger uh, something for everyone? Uh, you know, I would go back to uh, question one, what's the outcome I'm looking for? But, um, you, you know, what am I going to make an example of someone in, in front of others so that everybody learns the lesson? Mm. I think that's very dangerous. I would never do it. It's just uh, too many variables, too many people watching 
uh, too much that can be perceived out of context, uh, people that have different perceptions, all the things that, that we've talked about. However, um, you know, I was thinking about how I, how I have done this in the past is I, I would critique you in private and tell you that we had an issue, a problem, a challenge, whatever it was, and we would, I would do my best to decide the outcome I want. I would think about showing help, care, and trust to you. I would think about treating you the way you'd like to be treated in that so that you receive it, uh, man maintain your engagement level and all that. But then I might go to a team meeting and then share. We had a situation recently. I want to make sure we're all on the same page. I'm not talking about any names. Right. I'm not talking about any details. You know what I've learned is most of the people on your team are already aware of what's going on. That's right. They know more than you think they know. Uh, they're waiting to see, are you going to handle it? Are you going to step up to it? Uh, or, or is that the new uh, accepted behavior here, what, yeah. what happened? So rehashing who did what and how and what, and that's not, that's not relevant. It's not yeah. helpful. That's right. That's but, I could, but I could. I wonder how you thought about this, about coming to a team and said, we had an issue recently, uh, something about somebody addressed a customer, so, whatever it was. And I want to make sure we're on the same page. Here's, here's our uh, standard of performance we want on this. Here's my expectation. What do you think? And getting the team to, to come on board about that teaching point. But yeah. What are your thoughts? Well, I, what I love about that is from a collaborative standpoint, I think that gets everybody on the same page. The only thing I would say in that would be when you do it, um, when, when you have that conversation with that team member that led to this situation um, and you have that in private conversation, Maybe run it by them. Say, hey, what do you think about us having a team oh, discussion go. around this? Not necessarily bringing up the specific point or your name, but would you feel comfortable with that? Yeah. And if they say, yeah, like that's totally fine, I think then you even get their buy-in even more than that. But um, I like I like the idea because, again, you the team has to get on the same page on how we're handling issues like that, and it's being corrected. Well, as I wrap up, let me give you a couple of thoughts around this. This is not an easy topic, number one, not because it's not necessarily about public or private. It's like a lot of leaders don't even like to <laughs> give const constructive feedback. And I was listening to a podcast the other day, and I thought this was really important as leaders to remember. There's a way to be direct on a consistent basis, but to do it in a kind manner. And um, I've worked for a lot of leaders, and some do it really, really well. Others, not necessarily so well. And I know what that feels like on my side. And I challenged us just a minute ago of saying, hey, if you go back down memory lane and you've received constructive feed feedback before and it, doesn't, it wasn't done in the right way, what would that make you feel like it? Mm -hmm. Then we've also, where you and I both have received feedback and it was done in the right way, and you're like, man, no, I'm grateful for that. It was really a good growth lesson. So... My challenge to you as we wrap up is do not avoid these conversations. They need to happen. Really focus on doing them the right way. And we provided, again, the three questions that we've hit you with over and over <laughs> and over again to be asking yourself uh, about that situation and that individual before you have that private conversation. And I think if you do that, then you're going to do fine. Do not avoid it. Do not just sweep it under the rug. Because then what's going to end up happening is it is going to show up in public because you're going to react in the moment. And that's not going to be a good thing for the team, for you as a leader, or for the individual. Totally agree. And thank you, Scott, for that question. Keep them yeah. coming. And thanks, Chris, for the insights on that. Just as a reminder, if you'd like to download the learner guide for this, if you'd like to learn more about our offerings or leave a question or a comment for us, you can do that at Maxwell Leadership dot com slash podcast. We always love hearing from you and we're very grateful that you would spend this time with us. That's all today from the Maxwell Leadership Executive Podcast.